Reggie here and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, I want to take some time to offer up a few tips and pointers that can potentially prevent you from wasting money. And I think that this is an important topic right now, especially given that people are still worried about employment, inflation is still at 7%, and there's a general amount of uncertainty out there. There are a lot of people that are keeping their cards close to their chest, but also still want to enjoy the hobby. And so it is in that spirit that I'm going to offer up a few tips and pointers. And the very first thing that I want to talk about is avoiding any comic that happens to be a facsimile comic. In my mind, I think that this could be a waste of money. Now, this is not me saying facsimile comics are bad. I think that there have been some misperceptions with some things that I've said before. I am not against facsimile comics. I get the role that they play, but... If you want to avoid wasting money, grading a facsimile comic may not be the best thing. Values of comics are coming down and that includes facsimile comics. And so potentially sending one off to be clean, pressed and graded might not be the best thing. Buy it, read it, enjoy it, allow it to be a placeholder in your collection, but grading may not be the way to go. Potentially, if you do want a graded comic, you might want to pick up one that is already graded because there are a lot of them out there and they're relatively cheap versus the cleaning, the pressing, the shipping and taking the chance that that book, which is a new book, might not come back at a 9.8, might be too great of a risk. The second tip that I want to offer up is to avoid grading any comic that is younger than a year. Historically, I've had a bin set up here in the room where I set to the side any comic that I'm thinking about sending off to be graded. And normally, I would hold new books for at least three months to see how that book performed. Now, I was doing this in a dynamic market where prices were generally going upward by and large. And so I wanted to see whether the value of that book would continue to increase before sending it in to be graded. And oftentimes, that did not necessarily happen, especially with the newer books. But given where things are right now with the economy, and again, inflation being where it is, I would potentially hold any new book for at least a year to see how that book is performing. And again, values of comics are generally coming down, so I don't know that there is this huge rush to send books in. So potentially you wanna set the books to the side, you wanna evaluate them over time and look at the cost versus value ratio to determine whether it makes sense to actually send that book in. And potentially, if you follow this guidance, you're actually going to save yourself a lot of money. The other thing I will say to you is because values are coming down, you could always go out and pick up a graded version of that exact same book that someone else has already rolled the dice on. And potentially you can pick it up for just a couple of bucks and maybe even less than what it would have cost for you to send it in to be clean, pressed, graded, and shipped twice. The third tip that I want to offer up is to avoid grading any low grade comic. Now, this is not to say that low-grade comics are bad. That is not what I'm saying at all. But what I am suggesting is that when you send off a low-grade comic, you are tying up resources in that book. The cost of the book, the shipping, the cleaning, the pressing, those dollars are tied up in that book. And with the value of comics coming down, it is affecting comics across the board, high-grade comics and low-grade comics. If you've tied up your resources over here with this book that is being graded for six months to a year or whatever it happens to be, then as values come down, you potentially aren't in a position to pick up a higher grade copy of that book, potentially at a much lower cost. And so it's this thing of don't tie up all of your resources over here when you might be able to pick up a really awesome higher grade book for just a couple of bucks more. And so again, none of the tips that I've offered up in this video are absolute. These are not absolutes. 
These are things for you to think about, things for you to consider, things for you to evaluate. And to some degree or another, you have to look at your situation, your financial situation, your collection goals. You have to look at the book and determine what is ultimately going to be the best. Before I wrap up this video, I also want to offer up another tip. The economy is where it is. And a lot of people are holding their cards close. They're not necessarily spending money, but you still potentially want to be involved with the hobby. And so to that point, what you might want to do is to take this time while you're not necessarily buying lots of books to figure out what's really important to you and to your collection. Taking time to read the books that you have, taking time to read the books that you buy, taking time to better understand the, the market and the hobby may not be a bad thing because if you can be smarter about the hobby right now, potentially you will be in a much better position when things start to turn around because I absolutely do believe that things will turn around as the economy itself starts to turn around. And so to that point, if you are interested in elevating your game to a new level, you may want to consider picking up a copy of the Guide to Smart Comic Collecting. This is a guide that I've written with Doug Bratton. It is 88 pages of fantastic information that will absolutely help you to be smarter about this hobby. We cover a lot of topics from how to collect, what to collect, errors of comics, to some of the fallacies and, and thoughts that we have in our head that will affect how we collect. We also talk about using data to be a smarter collector. 88 pages of great tips and pointers that will help you tremendously. The guide is available on ReggieCollects.com. I encourage you to at least think about it. With that said, I want to wrap this video up. I hope that this video was helpful. And certainly, if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at ReggieCollects. Take care. No need rap, I'm rolling, rolling, rolling.